In the last video, we looked at doing pairwise comparisons using the t-test with the hypothetical data for cost of flights. But let's try a separate example, this time doing hypothetical IQ data scores for 1,000 people who are taking 20 different drugs. If you have the Jump Journal, you can find this data set under pairwise comparisons, under data, for IQ drugs. Now these data are actually formed on the basis of a random function. Let me show you what that random function is. I'll right click under IQ and go to formula. You'll notice that this is simply a rounded version of a simple random draw from a normal distribution. So in essence, we know the population function and we know it is not taking into account the different drug categories. Let's see what happens when we run an analysis of variance and what happens when we do the follow-up pairwise t-test. I'll use analyze bit y by x for this example. I'll put IQ as my y and drug as my x. When I click OK, Jump will return the dot plots here for all the different drugs, and I'll go to the red triangle and select means ANOVA. Now as we should expect and hope, our analysis of variance test result came up non-statistically significant. And in fact, in this case, we knew we should get a fail to reject result. That is, we knew there was no reference to the drug category when forming the random function. That is, there was no way there could be a real effect because simply we were taking random draws. So any differences we observe in means between each of these different drugs and the grand mean is simply due to noise or chance. So our analysis of variance has failed to reject the null, and so we shouldn't expect that there should be treatment differences. Let me minimize the ANOVA, and I want you to see what happens when I go to the red triangle, compare means, and run each pair student's T. Remember what this is going to do. This will do every pairwise test possible. So every drug versus every other drug. This will be a lot of tests. Let's see what happens. When I run this result, we'll get a huge amount of output. But just to clean things up, I'm going to minimize the LSD threshold matrix. And let's try to interpret the output we have. First, let's look at the connecting letters report. Now, remember how to read this. Levels that are not connected by the same letter are statistically significantly different at the 0.05 level. And in this case, we see that drug R and drug B are statistically significantly different from drug E. That is, they don't share a letter in common. Now, notice something about this table. I'll go down to the order differences report. We actually ended up with two comparisons that were statistically significant, and one that was even pretty close. We actually have a lot of them that are fairly close to statistically significant. Now, our overall ANOVA did not come up with a statistically significant result. In fact, it was pretty much non-statistically significant in a very comfortable range. That is, we got a result that would have occurred by chance a large, large proportion of the time. So, why is it the case that our t-tests, our pairwise t-tests, are actually returning several categories or several comparisons that are statistically significantly different? 